Hey, as promised, we're going to come up with a short video to help you memorize the qualitative analysis notes. Well, this is a short one that we came up with. I hope it was helpful and if you really like the video, remember to click like and don't forget to subscribe. As we promised, we are going to show you the identification of ions or the qualitative analysis notes right now. How do you effectively memorize them? Well, first of all, before I even start off with the paper, one very important table that I hope you can take some time to memorize is the solubility sort table. Now, the word already say is a solubility sort table. Obviously, I will have soluble and insoluble. Another acronym that I want you to remember is no clothes. So cold. Now, what do you mean by no clothes? So cold. Well, this will help you with the nitrate, chloride, sulfate, and carbonate. No clothes, so cold. Isn't it cold right now? Now, after you able yourself to remember all this one, two, three, four, four N ions, you can fill up the solubility sort table easily. Like I always mentioned in all my videos, nitrates, all nitrates are soluble. So all nitrates, soluble, insoluble, none. Chloride over here is clothes. So clothes, remember two very famous brand, but same thing, all the chlorides are soluble except for two. Mm, every one of us, or I should say most of us, own an Apple phone. So Apple, AG, and phone, P, PB. AGPB, silver and lead. Sulfate here, remember all sulfate is also soluble. In Singapore, there are three signs, physics, chem and bio. Physics, chem and bio, PB, C-A-M-B-A. -A. Next up, carbonate. For carbonate, there's a special one. Remember, they are solely for group one and ammonium. The rest are absolutely insoluble. Some of you will be thinking, Ms. Selina, how will this table help us in the qualitative analysis? I'm glad you asked. Well, very simple. When I look at chloride over here, I saw this silver. So whenever you see silver, you will look at this table and you'll know, hey, silver, chloride. So actually, to test for chloride, you add a nitrate acid followed by silver nitrate. So every time you see silver, you go back to this table, it will tell you that they are testing of chloride. Now, how about sulfate then? Sulfate, another one that they always use is barium. So nitrate acid followed by barium nitrate. So next time when you see barium nitrate or barium being used, you know that they are testing for sulfate. Now, how about for carbonate? We know in the reaction, chemical reactions of acid that we are, I've taught you before, we know that acid plus a carbonate will often give you carbon dioxide. So the existence of carbon dioxide after you add an acid shows that carbonate is present. Next up, we left with the last one, which is nitrate. Of course, for nitrate, it's a little bit special. You notice that it is the most soluble one. There isn't anything insoluble sort that I can precipitate out to test for nitrate. So nitrate is a special one. So how special it is? What are some of the things that I can use to test for them? Well, they, you actually add two things inside. What are the two then? Well, I'm going to write here. You add sodium hydroxide followed by aluminium foil, okay? Sodium hydroxide followed by aluminium foil. So how do you remember? Remember the sound. Now, L, no, na, o, L. Now, na, o, L. So remember the sound and remember these two solutions or these two things that you add. Next up. Of course, I have covered the anion parts. Remember, when we talk about the solution, we have both the cation and the anion. So the anion part, we have covered it. Let's go to the cation. The cation is the simplest. 
Why do I say so? Because you only add, or I should say you only use two solutions. Which are the two? Sodium hydroxide and your aqueous ammonia. So every time you see these two solutions, you know immediately, hey, I know it's a test of cat ion. But how do I remember? Well, I separate them into three parts. Which are the three parts? I call them the colored, the white, and the colorless. Wow, some, some suddenly become very, very simple, correct? So who are the colored ones? Well, we have three famous color, blue, green, and red. The blue, the green, and the red. The blue, the green, and the red. Well, it so happened that they are your transition metal. So the blue is my Cu2+, which is copper. The green is my Fe2+. And the red is none other than my Fe3+. There you go. You have the blue, green, red. Blue, green, red. The colored ones are your transition metal, which is the easiest. Then how about the white one? Well, I separated them into two parts, okay? Also two parts, very simple. So what are the two parts? Well, I call them the insoluble white ones and the very soluble one. So for the white one that is very insoluble, who is very insoluble in sodium hydroxide? Remember calcium, Ca2+. Now when I talk about calcium over here, remember milk. When you drink milk, what makes milk so special because they provide us with calcium for our bones so remember the one that is when you add sodium hydroxide and it's insoluble give you a white precipitate is calcium then the next one whenever you add sodium hydroxide or even uh, aqueous ammonia they'll give you a white ppt and they are soluble in excess is the who who is the most soluble well, remember zinc, second 2 plus, and Z is the last one. So the last A to Z, Z is the last one, is the most soluble. Then we left with one more, which is the half-half. What do we mean by half-half? Half-half means under sodium hydroxide, it will give you a white precipitate and in excess, they will dissolve. But with aqueous ammonia, it will give you a white precipitate and no matter how hard you add, how much you add, it's not going to dissolve. I call it the half-half, which is your PB2+. plus. Your lead, alright? So this is my half-half. Now next up, I have my colorless. For this colorless, it's a little bit special. Similarly, you can remember the reactions when sodium hydroxide react with ammonium salt. Now, if you remember, I taught you before under reactions of alkalines, so if you didn't, go back and watch the properties of alkalines. Sodium hydroxide is a alkaline. When alkaline react with ammonium salt, you will produce ammonia gas. So, for this portion here, you will not see precipitate, but a gas will evolve and is what? Ammonia gas. When ammonia gas evolves with a sodium hydroxide, ah, that's where you know that ammonium, which is an H4+, is present. That's how I reproduce the QA notes very quickly. But of course, you will say, well, how about the gases? I believe that as time goes by with so much practices, the gases, you will be super familiar. Hey, thank you so much for watching this entire video. I know that there are different ways of memorizing it. So if you have a better way of memorizing this, remember to share with us, okay?